Welcome to SNC's podcast series, SNC Critical Insights. I'm Jared Fishman, a partner in Sullivan and Cromwell's financial services and capital market groups in our New York office. With me is Tony Lewis, special counsel in SNC's litigation group and cybersecurity practice in our Los Angeles office. Today, Tony and I are going to talk about a rule that has been proposed by the federal banking agencies that relates to cybersecurity, specifically a proposal that would require banking organizations to notify their regulator of certain kinds of cybersecurity incidents and also require bank service providers to notify their banking organization customers when they experience cybersecurity incidents. First, we'll discuss some of the background for this proposal, which was released by the Federal Reserve, the OCC, and the FDIC in December. Then we'll talk in more detail about the new requirements this proposal would impose on banking organizations and bank service providers. And finally, we'll conclude with a few takeaways. Tony, can you start with some of the context for this proposal? Sure, Jared. In recent years, cyber attacks reported to federal law enforcement have grown in both frequency and severity. These include cyber attacks on banking organizations that could potentially have a significant impact on their data and their systems. Federally regulated banking organizations are already subject to a few different notification requirements in the event of a cyber incident. Agency guidance under the Gramm-Leach-Bliley Act already requires them to notify their primary federal regulator as soon as possible after they become aware of a cyber incident including unauthorized access to or use of sensitive customer information. They're also required to file suspicious activity reports with regulators on reportable cyber events. Other state regulatory authorities have also become active in this area. Most significantly for financial institutions, the New York State Department of Financial Services requires that institutions it regulates notify the DFS within 72 hours of certain cybersecurity events. With this backdrop, let's turn to the recent cyber incident proposal from federal banking regulators. Thanks, Tony. Let's start by discussing some of the specifics of the proposed requirements for banking organizations. First, the proposed rules cover a wide range of banking organizations, including national banks, federal branches and agencies, bank holding companies, the U.S. operations of foreign banking organizations, as well as other kinds of banking entities. The proposal would require any of those banking organizations to notify its primary federal regulator if it believes it has experienced what the proposal calls a computer security incident that meets certain criteria, such that it is a notification incident under the proposed rule. The agencies define a computer security incident as an occurrence that results in actual or potential harm to the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of an information system or the information that that system processes, stores, or transmits. It would also include an occurrence that constitutes a violation or imminent threat of violation of security policies, security procedures, or acceptable use policies. As noted, however, not all computer security incidents will require a banking organization to notify its regulator. Notification would be required as a result of a computer security incident when the banking organization believes in good faith that it could materially disrupt, degrade, or impair one of three things. First, the ability of the banking organization to carry out banking operations, activities, or processes or deliver banking products and services to a material portion of its customer base in the ordinary course of business. Second, any disruption, degradation, or impairment of a business line, including associated operations, services, functions, and support that could result in a material loss of revenue, profit, or franchise value. Or third, disruption, degradation, or impairment of services of a banking organization where failure or discontinuance would pose a threat to the financial stability of the United States. Tony, what are some of the concrete examples of possible notification incidents that the agencies include in the proposal? A few events that would require notification are, first, a large-scale distributed denial of service attack that disrupts customer account access for an extended period of time. Second, a failed system upgrade or change that results in widespread user outages for customers and bank employees. Or third, a computer hacking incident that disables banking operations for an extended period of time. It's important to note that the proposal adds a notification requirement that covers a banking organization's operations. Right now, no federal regulation requires a banking organization to report a cyber attack affecting its operations to its primary federal regulator. 
For example, the Graham Leach Flyley guidance I mentioned earlier deals with incidents involving customer information as opposed to banking operations. As to timing, notification would have to be made to the primary federal regulator as soon as possible and no later than 36 hours after the banking organization determines in good faith that a notification incident has occurred. Another aspect of this proposal is the application of the notification requirements to bank service providers. The agencies recognize that banking organizations rely on bank service providers for many essential services. Like banks, bank service providers themselves face cyber risk, and those risks in turn could potentially affect their ability to provide services to their banking organization customers. Under the proposal, immediately after a bank service provider experiences a computer security incident that it believes in good faith could disrupt, degrade, or impair services for four or more hours, the bank service provider would be required to notify at least two individuals of each affected banking organization customer. Notably, the proposal would allow the agencies to enforce this notification requirement for bank service providers directly against the bank service provider itself for failing to make the required notice. Now that we've gone over some of the details of the proposal, let's talk about some of the high level takeaways. First, the notification incident standard that Jared discussed would trigger notification as a result of incidents that could materially harm operations. That's going to be true for some computer security incidents, even if it's not believed with certainty at that time that a vulnerability has actually led to a compromise. This is particularly true given the challenge in determining quickly or easily whether any compromise has occurred. In effect, this notification standard may apply broadly or be challenging to interpret depending on the circumstances. Next, the proposal would require banking organizations to report notification incidents more quickly than currently required. For example, the New York DFS regulation we talked about earlier as one of the shortest reporting timeframes in the U.S. at 72 hours. This proposal would cut that reporting time in half. The proposed rule does recognize that banking organizations will take a reasonable amount of time to form a good faith determination that it has experienced a notification event. In that vein, in practice, determinations about whether a notification incident has occurred can be tough for any organization to make with precision depending on the circumstances especially in the hours after the incident has occurred or has been discovered. The facts typically evolve, determining that a notification incident has occurred may require input from different areas of an organization, including cybersecurity, operations, finance, legal, and executive personnel, and possibly outside technical experts. Moreover, this proposal differs from the existing interagency guidance under the Graham Leach Bliley Act. To start, as we mentioned earlier, notification under this proposal would be triggered by a wider range of events than under the Graham Leach Bliley Act guidance, which focuses on customer information. Also, this proposal gives a concrete time frame for reporting as soon as possible and no later than 36 hours, in contrast to the Graham Leach Bliley Act guidance, which just says as soon as possible. Finally, while the Graham Leach Bliley Act guidance may require customer notice, this new proposal would only require that a banking organization notify its regulator. To conclude, as always, it's worth mentioning the context in which the proposed rule arises. The federal banking agencies have not historically issued prescriptive cybersecurity rules, and until recently, they haven't typically brought public enforcement actions after cybersecurity breaches. Instead, They've usually played a big role in developing processes for banks to measure cybersecurity risk and preparedness, and in encouraging banks to focus on cyber risk management through the use of tools such as exam findings and guidance. In the past six months, though, the agency's approach has changed. For example, listeners might recall the enforcement action brought against Capital One in August following its cybersecurity breach. And now, with the release of this proposal, these actions likely signal that agencies plan to continue playing a more active role in oversight and enforcement in connection with cybersecurity incidents. Of course, the exact notification requirements that banking organizations and bank service providers will face depend on the final outcome of the agency's rulemaking here, and public comments are due to the agencies by April 12th. Thank you for listening to SNC's Critical Insights. For more information about our practice, please visit us on the web at www.solcrom.com. Mm-hmm.